Hello and welcome here to another video on my YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Anise and I make videos related to Kubernetes on the cloud native ecosystem. I'm also a CNCF ambassador. Uh, last year I was ambassador of the year. Um, <laughs> and I like to showcase different things around the CNCF ecosystem as part of that role as well. So I just published my weekly DevOps newsletter. You can find the link below. Usually I share interesting content from across the space that I found or that people link me to. It's usually not my own content. I usually have a section for my own content. And then there's always a tweet of the week. Uh, now in this week's newsletter, it's a KubeCon edition. So I share all of the sessions that I'm really excited about. Now. You have to note it's based on my time zone. So I'm only going to attend sessions like up to 9 p.m. Because that's when I go to bed. So <laughs> FYI. No, <laughs> you can still sign up for KubeCon for virtual, uh, for the virtual sessions um, through this link, just through the registration page. It's just $75, um, which is really cool. So to the sessions. If you have received my newsletter via email, you might have realized that all of the links were the same because I basically went to the KubeCon schedule, program schedule. And what I did is I thought, oh, if I go to a session, I don't know, the session here, if I just copy the link, like the name of the session of the event, um, copy paste that, it will generate the link for the session, which is not true. It just shows the general chat link to the schedule. So I updated all of the links to actually lead to the session. Let's just uh, look at all the sessions that I'm excited about for Wednesday. So first one is Keynote, Beyond Automation, Kubernetes Success requires a GitOps Mindset. Now, I will probably watch all of the keynote sessions, but in the, on the first day, I'm particularly excited about this keynote as well as this keynote. Uh, what we learned discussing the world's most, no, dissecting, <laughs> I'm discussing, dissecting the world's most popular containers. Um, now, uh, I'm just, I love like stories of like how people did X. Um, Slim AI is in a really interesting company. And uh, I don't know how to pronounce her name. I Aisa? Aisa? Um, I, we follow each other on Twitter and she has some really interesting um, just posts and content. And yeah, just excited for a keynote. Uh, now in terms of the sessions, the first one is how to build distributed systems. And should you? So some people might know that I've worked for a long time in the blockchain uh, space and blockchains are based on distributed system principles. I mean, similar to Kubernetes cluster, right? You will ultimately have a distributed system in one way or another. Um, and you have several trade-offs that you have to make. Um, and I just, yeah, like to hear the stories and thoughts. Um, I didn't read, I have to admit, I didn't read all of the abstracts. But um, this is just a topic I'm interested in. And with most of these talks, with most of these sessions, I'm just really interested in the topic. Then the next ones are happening at the same time, which is a raccoon and a group of turtles secure clusters together. Um, so I'm just interested also as well in um, not necessarily starter content, but uh, basically <laughs> uh, make space for both your welcome. Um, yeah how people approach security in the space. I should have really read those abstracts. I really went for the titles of like what sounds interesting. Um, it might also happen that I watch one talk, right? And then I skip to the next one. The next one is by two people from ChainGuard. Now I'm generally interested in what ChainGuard is gonna come up to. They have built a lot of image scanning, uh, no, image, container image optimization. optimization. They have, um, done lots of research in the security space and written some really interesting content that makes it accessible for also for beginners. Um, yeah, and so I'm just interested in what they are going to talk about. Um, the next session is using eBPF superpowers to generate Kubernetes security policies. This is also related to my work. Um, so I'm just really interested in the topic itself. Again, most of these talk and then untrusted execution, attacking cloud native supply chains. Um, 
Andrew is a great speaker, so I'm just really interested in what he's going to talk about as well. Um, and I'm interested in the topic of client native security supply chains. Um, going back to my, maybe let's just not go through the different sessions one by one, but just look at them here. So the next one on Thursday is what I'm really interested about. Why can't Kubernetes devs just add this feature? Seems so easy, understanding the feature lifecycle in Kubernetes. Um, and that's also just mainly me being curious more about the inner workings of how Kubernetes gets um, updated and progresses. And a lot of times it's like features, they take time to integrate, right? Or um, they are deprecated over long times. Like there's a long time of deprecation and things like that, right? Like what what goes into the decision-making also to add new features. Um, then the next one is towards something better than CRDs in a post-operator world. So we're gonna, we're using operators um, for our open source projects at Aqua Security. And lots of these operators, they obviously depend on CRDs. Now, most of the CNCF cloud native projects, projects within the CNCF rely on CRDs. So I'm interested in that, um, just like, what is the alternative in that case? Like, how do you else do it? Because um, I don't necessarily know. <laughs> so I'm curious what Stefan has to say, um, what he's going to share. Then thriving with Kubernetes on call best practices and lessons learned. Now that's a panel discussion. Um, and as you might know, I worked last year as site reliability engineer. So I'm interested in topics related to that and related to security mainly. You will see most of these talks in that area. Then the next one is Daughter's Journey from StatsD to Prometheus with 10 million metrics second per second. Now that's a, a user story, which is really interesting. And then obviously I'm also promoting Prometheus a lot of times um, when I'm talking about, for example, accessing metrics from your security reports. So I just want to stay up to date with those topics as well and with Prometheus and how people are using Prometheus in production. Next one is so S bombs matter now what? Um, that's also related to the um, S bomb and supply chain journey. There's another talk. Um, did I skip something? No. Um, related to supply chain that I, I don't know. That I was curious about. I can't find it. Then the next one is uh, turn me on with cloud native feature flags. Um, that's one of the newer CNCF projects that entered the CNCF this year as a sandbox project. So I'm just curious on how they're doing, what they're up to, how the project has evolved since the last KubeCon. And I'm putting Hacker breaching your cluster in automatic quarantine. Um, that's really related to a question that I got in one of the latest events that I spoke at. People were like, okay, so once somebody is in your system, is in your infrastructure, what do you do? And I was just sitting there like, mm, you need to get them out, but how do you get them out? Or um, how do you change things so they are kicked out? And uh, like one, once somebody is already inside of your system, how do you get them out and then secure it? Or is that the same process? You know, things like that. Um, I haven't really worked with, like I haven't, been in a situation like this or worked with people like that. So the question really caught me off guard. So um, that's why I'm curious in this talk. Now, special thanks to Rudely for sponsoring my newsletter every week. Um, they are an amazing company, incident response through Slack. It's, it's a great way to automate your incident response. Um, do check them out. And then the last thing is, if you're curious about more content, do join our Slack community. Um, it's just at community.100daysofkubernetes.io and it just also you can share your content there if you're curious if you're interested if you or if you come across any interesting blog post or video do share it there with the community and i will put it likely into my newsletter have an amazing kubecon if you're attending either virtual or in person uh do make the best of it uh in person i would really focus on networking virtual I would focus on sessions like I'm going to do. Uh, also, if you have any additional questions, if this is your first KubeCon, I recorded a session with uh, Bart from the um, Data on Kubernetes community who's leading that and then also with Jennifer. So do 
check that out. Um, that video we are basically answering, covering all of the first time KubeCon questions. Uh, also make sure to really um, abide, do you say abide, by the code of conduct. The code of conduct is there to empower community members um, to have a voice to have space to stand up for other community members do read the code of conduct take it seriously um just reiterating on that it's very very important to make everybody feel included in this amazing event now this is it for today i hope this little video was useful and give you kind of an insights into the things that i'm interested in and looking at right now uh, as well as maybe there are some talks that you might now want to check out have a listen to either virtual or in person or maybe some of the talks that i'm thinking about watching uh you already put to your schedule onto your schedule I hope to see one of my upcoming videos. If you like this video, do make sure to give it a like, thumbs up, and yay. Um, subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. I hope to see you on one of my next videos. Have an amazing day. I hope to see you in one of my upcoming videos. Bye bye.